when I was a junior in college, I decided that I wanted to get into machine learning. And like most other nerdy college kids, I applied to work in a machine learning research lab. I one night sent a long email explaining exactly why I was the perfect candidate to work at one of these labs to the professor. And to my excitement, he actually got back to me and invited me to come to the meeting. Um, at that meeting was the start of a six month long experience with that lab. I would every day after my classes go into the lab and do basic coding tasks for the PhD students, um, nothing machine learning. And then at night I would watch these online courses that they had suggested for me. And when I look back on it now, retrospectively, uh, the work was fun. Being with people who loved to code was awesome. Uh, but the machine learning courses were terrible and I really didn't enjoy what I was doing. But the thing that kept me going was that when my friends asked me what I was up to, I could tell them and feel cool that I was part of this machine learning lab teaching a two-legged robot to walk. When I was in college, I gravitated towards machine learning because it was the cool thing to do. But the more I got into it, I realized that it wasn't the best way to make an impact on the world. And while I read this passage uh, after I made this change, I feel like it perfectly describes my transition from machine learning into AWS. And so I'm gonna read it right now. Uh, this is Atomic Habits by James Clear. Um, it says, the impact created by a change in your habits is similar to the effect of shifting the route of an airplane by just a few degrees. Imagine you're flying from Los Angeles to New York City. If a pilot leaving from LAX adjusts the heading just three and a half degrees south, you'll land in Washington, DC instead of New York. Such a small change is barely noticeable at takeoff. The nose of the airplane moves just a few feet, but when magnified across the entire United States, you end up hundreds of miles apart. <clears throat> and while right now James is talking about habits, I feel like the exact same thing applies to picking a career choice and the difference between choosing a machine learning route versus an AWS route is the difference between the type of jobs and opportunities that I would have had down the road. Um, had I picked a machine learning route, I would have had uh, likely worked for a larger company. I would have, uh, for the most part, been siloed with a machine learning department um, and, and really would have had a very hard time having any ownership over any project I made. And by choosing AWS, you'll have more opportunity to work with any size organization. You'll get to spend more time working with clients and have the ability to move laterally as well as vertically within an organization. Hi, I'm Dylan, a cloud engineer living in Bend, Oregon. A little bit of background about me. I've always had the desire to build things that people get value out of and that I have ownership over. And this YouTube channel is a perfect example of that. Uh, and, and so the thing with machine learning is it's just not that. If I build an algorithm or I write an algorithm, uh, my friends aren't necessarily gonna be able to get value from that or get what that means. And like, for instance, let's say I write an algorithm that can detect whether you're wearing a helmet. This is something that uh, apps like Lime and Bird uh, the scooter share operators use and they'll give you a discount. Um, so let's say I'm working on that machine learning app um, or algorithm. If I don't have the ability to build that app, the algorithm means nothing uh, without the app it's sitting on and the data underneath it. And, and so for me, um, it, or for anyone writing machine learning algorithms, if, if you ever want to have ownership over what you're building and you don't have the skills to build the app, you're going to have to pay someone to do that. And that's going to cost a lot of money. And so your, your route towards ownership is going to be by paying a lot of money where I really think it should be the flip side of that. Um, if I want ownership and I want to provide value, I want to be really good at building the app, building the base app that it's gonna sit on and then the smaller task of the machine learning algorithm, don't get me wrong, it can be a big task, but being good at building the app, marketing it, beautiful UIs, delightful experiences, that's what I want my wheelhouse to be. And then that's gonna provide ownership. In my mind, that provides ownership over the product and then outsourcing the machine learning or later down the road, learning machine learning 
uh, is the order that things work a lot better in my head. And that ultimately is why I quit machine learning and adjusted my trajectory towards AWS. Uh, and AWS is exactly that uh, platform to build apps on. Um, what AWS is, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, or if you do know, is a cloud computing platform, meaning that in the olden days, it would have taken a lot of people to, to build an app that can truly scale, meet the demands of tens of thousands of users. And uh, AWS provides this platform where just one person or a couple people can build an app that will be able to service uh, basically infinite amounts of users. And that's the beautiful thing about it is that idea of ownership, right? We're getting back to that idea of ownership and how can one human have the most leverage over the tools they're using. And that that is what I see AWS at is its core is just this extreme leverage of the input I put into knowing AWS versus the output I can get of serving so many people, providing value at, at that scale. And so AWS provides that heavy lifting of the computing where you know I can make a serverless application and I don't need to worry about uh, provisioning my computer and my servers. I, I can write the code, I can focus on the business logic of an application and, and focus on the things that are gonna provide direct value uh, to the people that are using the product. And, and so to me, that is just this invaluable tool um, and, and platform to have as someone who ultimately does want to provide value to the world and does want to have ownership of it. Uh, and, and so that's, that's my thought process towards shifting from machine learning to AWS. And of course, uh, your motives could be different than mine. You could be watching this and be like, Dylan, machine learning super cool. I love it. And it's exactly where I want to be. And, and like, what I would say to that is awesome. Like you keep going and doing that. Um, but at whatever rate, like don't just do machine learning because it's cool. Uh, just because like you see some articles or you see like, you know, you go onto TikTok and you're like, oh my gosh, why is this so addicting? I what machine learning's doing this? I want to learn machine learning. I don't, I don't know your like fun story to think machine learning's like the coolest path of computer science, but like, just consider why are you doing it? Are you doing it just because it's cool or are you doing it because you have a true passion for it and, and a passion for the value you can add to the world through it? Um, and, and there's so much like cloud computing being one of them, serverless being another, like there are these movements as well uh, within computing uh, that are just so incredible and in, in lead to different end roads and end opportunities. Um, and, and so take the time, explore, uh, look into multiple paths uh, as especially if you're in college or you're just getting out of college and consider what impact you wanna make on the world and let that be the deciding factor in the route you choose. If my path towards cloud computing sounds interesting to you, you're probably gonna like my other videos. And so consider subscribing and coming along this journey with me and many others learning what cloud computing is and how it impacts business and the world around us. I hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time.